especially when we are remote when we are working from home everybody has started talking about that we need zero trust talk about the leadership they say we want zero trust uh, it used to be a buzzword like in every talk of mine i've said that it's a buzzword but uh, in the past few months i would say 6 7 months it is not uh, like it's not a buzzword anymore so let's talk about what it is basically and uh, what people are talking about and what it means to us so uh, most of the things uh, um, our uh, great uh, host has mentioned so i'm not going to talk about myself i'm going to straight jump into the talk so this is what we call it as a traditional uh, model or traditional security model wherein uh, when we started off with security way back in 2005 6 and this was my assumption that anything or anyone who's within the organization within the four boundary walls that person is secu- uh, is is actually a nice person and everyone who's outside they're trying to uh, uh, take control of our data they're trying to uh, get into our network and do all the non uh, not so good things so uh, now if you think about it the current scenario this is not the situation anymore we all are sitting anywhere in the world like uh, i've been shuffling around in the past months and uh, i'm working from anywhere it's like any work from anywhere even i would say not for work from home but work from anywhere that is the kind of model so does it suit it especially um, with the kind of modern environments that we have not really and uh, if you m- cannot relate to it i'm sure you can relate to this kind of uh, 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 an architecture where uh, as a network person we've built all these diagrams especially to uh, make the clients understand people understand for whom we were working that yes this is how uh, an architecture looks like uh, we have so many firewalls here there and everywhere and different zones are there different networks are there and uh, this has been like a a kind of a, a environment wherein we have trusted zone untrusted zone and only the people in the trusted zone are allowed to access and the kind of a philosophy wherein uh, trust insiders uh, but what about the insider threats i have seen people who leave the organization and still pose risk to the organization i have seen it with few people and there was one recent uh, hack which happened on the really top shots uh and i wouldn't want to name the company but then that was from the insiders like the, the account for the top shots were hacked and if somebody like something like this happens would you trust an insider i doubt similarly um if there is only one door open with multiple layers if i bypass those layers by any chance let's say i have everything right i have sim solution i have ids ips i have everything right but i get into someone's account using their credentials if it's an administrator which means i have access to anything and everything nothing can uh, save me or save my organization from that and how about uh, when we are talking about uh, safeguarding non critical information who wants to save non critical information like why do you have to keep saving that and sometimes what happens is we tend to miss on the right information but safeguard the non critical information and i this is like the normal thing that happens so uh, this is basically the current landscape that we have wherein we have uh, we've moved from the uh, the traditional or the old model wherein network pack, packet firewalls were there to the to hold the control networks like all the traffics uh, could be traced back and can be marked as inside or outside but this has changed this has completely changed we are all uh, uh, de- we are all working from home we are all not depending on the buildings or the office premises or the traditional data centers we are talking about cloud we are talking about uh, we have perimeterless uh, environment and on top of it uh, we are talking about privilege access not only uh, like uh, giving to one person but to accounts so how should we manage it and on top of it we now live in the world of uh, advanced persistent threats that create a growing and changing risk to the organizations how would you handle it especially if it's a financial organization it's a big 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 pain uh, talk about intellectual property talk about reputation of a company now you're losing the money and you're losing the reputation what happens then talk about equifax what happened to them 
so expanding access and uh, obtaining credentials uh, is an essential part of uh, apt i've seen that i've gone through all the listing that has happened and uh, what apt talks about so uh, when the perimeters have disappeared people can log on remotely cloud has stepped in and everyone is a tenant on a shared server and moving towards this particular digital transformation journey and when i talk about the breach statistics we are spending more money on security each year people have started to understand that yes security needs a, a a chair on the board so when it actually is happening why are we getting less secure than the more secure part and zero trust provides a better framework to look at cyber security and rethink the way we are working on the security or we are doing the security Uh, if i talk about the number uh, so cyber security cost is uh, set to increase to 6 trillion by 2021 that was by uh, cyber security ventures and the cost of a data breach that is 3.62 million that's a huge amount and that's a study by ponemon institute uh, combined with ibm and if i talk about 80% of the data breaches happen because of the privilege access abuse now that's a big number so if these number are so big why it's so worrisome and the worrisome picture is that the companies uh, that are getting breached they are not even getting breached once but sometimes four five times in a couple of years and that's more 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 critical and we are spending more money on security each year so why not this happening uh, i'll tell you an example like just couple of years back 4 million customers of a us cable provider were exposed to the internet after a, a contractor failed to properly secure a public cloud um, public cloud database now if a malicious person steals that information and shares it on the social media or on the on the internet or anywhere how much harm it can cause it is going to be a big 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 problem and vendor failed to limit external access to the public cloud service now this is like the basic thing that we really need so it becomes even more important when we talk about uh, things in the cloud because we all are stepping in the cloud now or or i would say we almost stepped in the cloud so let's talk about uh, server and client architecture wherein uh, when we have a client can we trust the client can we trust the users or the clients i would say no we have seen the cases happening or we it's, it's just evident that we shouldn't be and similarly can we trust the server servers can get breached and anyone can do any harm to it similarly can we trust the network no so when we don't trust the network what can we do or what is the lesson that we're getting out of it trust but always verify or what it is now this is the kind of situation that i am in what i am going to do so zero trust then zero trust steps in and it says never trust always verify even if it's your best friend or the known organization never ever trust so always make sure that uh, in any organization even um, we can uh, relate to the zero trust concept in our daily lives wherein we can never trust people uh, once for example i have a best friend and i tell all my secrets to my best friend and some and one fine day we had a huge fight and all my secrets go out what could go wrong if i can't keep my secrets can i um, think that my best friend is going to keep my secrets for always like nothing should happen to your best friend but yeah so that's like a not so good approach so zero trust says to trust no one not even users behind the firewall in short it flips the mantra from trust but verify into verify and or always verify and never trust so you again heard the word trust and i will be using this word in the whole presentation wherein uh, i will be advocating about that uh, make sure we are secure we are taking care of our trust properly and zero trust advocates the creation of zones and segmentations and keeping the sensitive information and not just the network it talks about validating the devices validating the users maintaining their privileges which we are going to talk about in the in the full presentation so let's start with uh, how it all started off like over the years security models have uh, transitioned 
many of us have seen the first uh, first came access control list we all had access control list we were managing it people going in out the traffic going in out and everything was going smooth but then there were a lot of challenges wherein any any could have been a problem then came role based access control and the, now principles of least privilege especially i would say now people are started to combine principles of least privilege and role based access control to to give a, a different sense to a, a model called zero trust model and uh, the problem with if we are using just role based access control is that um, if it's allowed if the the, the there's a proper permission or there's a permission that is allowed to subjects and the, that subject moves from one organization to another or one role to another the permission still stays with that person which is a big problem if i am part of the network team and uh, suddenly i move to security like i'm very good at managing the network and that that's what happened to me i was part of the network team and i moved to security team but if i still carry my network team privileges and somebody asked me to uh, to do a, a rule change on the firewall and i do it is it allowed or is it supposed to happen not at all if i am supposed to be with one team i have to carry that role itself i have to wear only that hat if i'm carrying multiple hats somebody can snatch it and be the owner of that so who will be responsible for it i will be people will be thinking that it's my hat and i have done all the wrong to them so security thing has become or security parameter is is a, is a thing of the past wherein with the cloud adoption and advancement and all these technologies uh, all the enterprises or organizations must assume that the environments are hostile and especially in cloud we are giving away our data to the cloud providers even though we trust them we are signing the contract but still we have to go with that kind of an assumption that our environment is hostile when we are in the cloud so this is a core uh, tenant of zero trust wherein we understand this that we have to take care of our own data even though cloud providers say that i'm going to take care of some things it's our responsibility also that's when shared responsibility model comes into picture so read the rules and regulations and the kind of terms and conditions i would say uh, or privacy policies that they have and it's uh, it it becomes even more important that uh, or essential that we need a model of trust verification and a continuous evaluation of that trust so that we have further access we are avoiding all those later moments that happen because if somebody gets to our network now when we talk about zero trust architecture it it is basically a kind of controlling our own environment so the supporting system behind it it's all thing is called a control plane and every other component in the whole control plane that's being uh, referred to as a data plane which is being coordinated and configured by the control plane so control plane manages the data plane and in zero trust we first identify a protect surface now i am talking about so many jargons wherein so protect surface is nothing but it's made up of network's most critical and the most uh, valuable resources like data assets uh, application services so once we know okay these are our critical data assets services and applications we are going to manage it now no two organization can have the same uh, protect surface because they have their unique um, uh, unique applications unique servers different kind of data and services so we have to be mindful of it if we are talking about zero trust and we are talking about our own data we have to categorize what exactly do we need and with the with this identified we can identify a lot of things because we know our environment we can know where the traffic is going who is accessing the uh, environment uh, who the users are which applications uh, they are trying to use they are trying to access where they are trying to connect and uh, then based on that we can enforce the policies and it also means that we don't have a huge network so that we don't get to know about what's happening but we have a smaller chunks of networks and we maintain that so we have the visibility of our own network and we are not uh, getting prone to all these uh, not so good attacks which happens and especially by the apts so what we can do is we can create the perimeters by deploying a, a segmentation gateway uh, which is which can also be called as next generation firewall 
and um, when we talk about segmentation gateway we also get uh, with this we also get the granular information or visibility into our own traffic which is the need of the hour especially uh, from the application layer perspective it really really needs it and um, uh, it's also very uh, uh, important to know who is trying to get into our uh, protect surface if it's an unauthorized user let's stop it then and there if the, somebody is trying to exfiltrate the sensitive data why are we allowing them so once we build the the zero trust network with the right policies that we need for our own organization we can continue to monitor and maintain it and that's like one important aspect that we gain the visibility in context of our, our, our traffic users and application and we keep on monitoring it now the most important question is it a good fit for the cloud like zero trust people talk about it that it's a good fit for the cloud but is it so let's think, let's check about it so in my perspective um, i would say yes it is now why because when we uh, when we have a lot of enterprises uh, who are eager to move to the cloud and build their digital everywhere network especially the the organizations who are built on the cloud itself so they have to have all of this so they have so much of sensitive data like uh, pii personal health information or uh, intellectual property information payment card data uh, now so much of workload which is going around in and around the cloud so it becomes evident that we uh, understand that uh, do we need uh, do we need to protect the data inside the cloud do we need to have uh, do we need to store the data in the cloud with some recommendations or we need to have some access control mechanism in place do we have to have be a vendor neutral because i have seen cases wherein people do the vendor lock in and suddenly get stuck if i am with one vendor and something happens to the vendor i am stuck there and if they say that i am not going to go ahead and keep your loads i i don't have an organization from that day itself from that moment itself so uh, uh, we need to be very considerate about the the vendor lock in is not there and I, you would be thinking that it's not a security aspect but uh, it is an aspect of zero trust that we consider the vendor, vendor lock in we assess the risk we assess the that how much risk it's going to cost to an organization and uh, especially with uh, the the hybrid kind of model we are uh, we are if we are going to be in then we monitor the environment and last but not the least we also have to be very very cautious of uh, the patches that are going to be there so we have to be stay up to date now when we are talking about implementing uh, a zero trust especially in an enterprise network uh, where we have so many applications we have on premise data center we have everything so we have to be very uh, consider about considerate about using caspi we have to we, we have to know that where exactly we are going to be placing the proxies we're going to be uh, using remote access vpn or not uh, who is going to be accessing the data where it's going to be so we have to be very very uh, uh, knowledgeable about our own network and uh, there's one important uh, aspect of the cloud applicability or when we start using the cloud and understanding the zero uh, uh, zero trust network or zero cloud people have started to call about it so uh, we need to make sure that we are implementing these things on our private applications which are in public cloud we are not just thinking about the external facing applications only we are talking we are keeping our uh, uh, we we are keeping these practices for the saas applications that we are going to be using even though that in the saas uh, platforms we are only managing the identities but then that's very very important to manage the identities well think about we have access to one of the cloud security provider and that's a scanner and somebody got gets our credentials and i am a person who runs the scans on the network and if somebody has my credentials because it's a saas account and i lost my credentials they will be able to see all the vulnerabilities in my network and they can exploit and at the same time that person might be able to run scan on my network and try and figure out what else is there 
like to give you an example uh, um, so we were doing just one activity in my previous tent wherein uh, we were trying to understand our own network what all cameras are there what all printers are there can we try and get something out of it so for once we realized that these camera devices are accessible they have a page and then we can try and access so we started looking for default credentials and uh, uh, when i we we started looking for default credentials uh, we got to know okay this is a vendor and now let's check uh, what could be the credential now there was some 25 20 or 26 were listed out there and after fifth or sixth attempt i realized that get, we we got into the camera now if we can get into an organization camera they can we ask the viewer as getting into someone's home getting to know whether they're saving the money or they're saving their the valuables and just do anything with that so uh, it, it it's very very important to secure the saas applications and uh, devops in the cloud is becoming another big thing so zero trust can be implemented really really well uh, in the devops environment as well not just the the uh, the perimeter or just as the spaces so another important aspect which become, which is uh, managing iam i am i've talked about saas but it's like one big thing that we have to consider because if we don't take care of i am which is identity and access management we could be losing a lot of information so let's start with that what all things are very very important for zero trust i have had uh, i've given you enough gyan so let's get into the facts of it now we have to categorize the data so zero trust uh, in the cloud requires complete visibility of the cloud apps and the data being stored and who is accessing the data when it's doing that we need to appropriately categorize the data that if our data is confidential internal restricted or for public because if we are not categorizing it we might be saving the data which is not at all required to be secure and ultimately what will happen the security team will be concentrating or focusing on protecting the data which is not needed or they might be monitoring the data which is not needed or which might not be uh, so much of confidential to the organization so where possible data should be safe even if it leaves the device apps infrastructure and networks uh, or, the, or we have to keep the organization controls in place uh, that we have to understand the current setup i can blabber about it that we need to categorize the data but before that we need to understand our own current setup we need to have a detailed look at it like which location the data, current data is what all regulations could be there uh, uh, how should we categorize the data and once we categorize the data how we going to be placing that what encryption we would be need, needing and uh, organization has all the rights to limit access to the data uh, especially on the permissions uh, if, if to give you an example if i am a developer or a security person do i need access to the production instance where the load is running i don't think so i would need so what i can do is we can, we can segregate the roles um so again i'll give you my personal experience wherein i was uh, working with one of the clients long back and we were starting off with the cloud thing and when we were starting off with the cloud thing they had over 200 accounts on the cloud 200 accounts on the cloud every developer is running using the um, the root keys and they're using the root accounts they're using the main accounts master accounts everywhere okay they were fine they were running it fine everything was going smooth but one fine day there was one key that was lost okay is there a problem absolutely and fortunately uh, we, we were able to secure the account but if that doesn't happen what could go wrong that account is gone forever that application is gone forever the data is gone forever so we, it's it, it's important to not use the master accounts anywhere and everywhere it has to be only only for the critical purposes that is required we can have multiple administrator under that root account we can have multiple roles policies how about manage that then comes the least privilege or principles of least privilege wherein least privilege uh, access rights is is like a is a fundamental principle of zero trust security so overly extensive security is one of the key issues 
which we have seen, especially with consumer identity and access management and the uh, the kind of apps that we use every day. I'm sure you might have some other some of the other shopping apps. Right now, I'm doing all the shopping on the online apps. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of online shopping, but then the the new times have made me realize that I think this is also something which we can do. So, or or, or I might do because. Uh, I can't go to the market and I can't trust that if I am wearing a mask or the other person is like what kind of situation I am in. So similarly, uh, if we don't have the principles of least privilege and we are not authenticating the users rightly and I have access to anything and everything, I can do anything and everything. I would do even though you talk to me or not or you tell me or not. So user access to cloud resources must be first authenticated and authorized. If you're not needing the access, let's remove it. We can use SAML based authentication. We can use OAuth, OID, the new mechanism that are in place. Now you talk about that, how about legacy softwares, legacy applications. There are legacy applications wherein you can bridge them with a reverse proxy and then you can connect it further with the, the newer technologies that we have. A lot of good reverse proxies or web seals are there to support the legacy applications with these new uh, authentication and authorization mechanisms. And wherein we can use uh, granular role-based permissions as well. And there's another thing that is uh, that is coming into the limelight is just in time, uh, least privilege, wherein if I need uh, to run certain load at 6 p.m. in the evening till 10 p.m., I would only allow a role to be there for that du during that period. And that's when function as a service comes into picture and that runs amazingly in the cloud. And that's one a beautiful thing that I like about uh, the, all the cloud portion that are running. Uh, so we, we raise your hand if you have multiple accounts. I have like tons and tons of accounts. And I am so paranoid that I have multiple uh, uh, Gmail accounts or multiple ac accounts for my own services. Like I want to run a LinkedIn with this or my social handle with it. There's one for my banks. There's one for my own personal uh, or uh, um, emails or something. So I have so many accounts and not just the, my email accounts, but I have social media accounts and so many there. So how should we handle it? And especially when we are talking about identity and access management, which first started off with when um, we have so many interna uh, like internal applications and uh, over the years in 1980s, I would say, in 1980s, we all started off with this, this, this kind of a principle wherein identities were not rightly defined. And we were able to get into someone's identity. But then oh, we uh, started identifying the identities. We started talking about the governance of identities. We started talking about role-based access control and even single sign-on. But now, uh, like I said, over the years, we have matured. Identity system has matured. And we have started to talk about context-aware access. When uh, it's, it's trying to gather information about that, uh, where we are, what we are doing, what we are doing with our own accounts. And if we look uh, um, at the, the market from past 10 years, MFA was a big pain, but now everyone needs MFA. Like all of my accounts have an MFA. Uh, or I would say I have a, a push notifications sent to my phone or my devices. So there are modern solutions available. So which can handle uh, identity and management system. And if I have to tell you or give you stats, 10% of us probably still have the word admin as the password. Trust me, still people do use that. And if I talk about my uh, demo accounts or the test accounts, absolutely. There are certain ones which still have, but is it a good practice? I would say no, never, never keep that. Another uh, aspect that comes into picture is uh, when I say context aware access, it, it goes deep down into risk scoring, automation, and application only access. Um, now, with adaptive access, when it, it when it is talk of the town, it says that knowing that who has the access uh, or enabling the right access a user to have the right access to, to the right data for the right reason from the right location. And if we don't do it, we are in trouble. So remember, enabling the right user to have the right access to the right data for the right reason 
from the right location it is very very important and machine learning only helps us with that and uh, artificial intelligence it can give us the right view wherein uh, what do we know about the user what do we know about their device all the access to the services can be authorized if let's say i am in delhi right now can i be in philippines in one hour technically practically no it's not possible but suddenly my uh, somebody starts logging into my account or somebody gets into my place turn off the camera and start speaking would you say that i'm the right person no i that's not right so adaptive access gives a meaning to identity and access management to the next level now another important aspect is monitoring and logging now when we build a right system we need to have right monitoring in place and uh, we need to uh, have the monitoring zone wise so that we know what zones are doing what we analyze data access properly we need to have audit trail for it not just for the audit purpose compliance purpose but to get to do the post mortem of all the incidents that happen or if something happens to a network we were not able to detect it but later on we get to realize it we can go back and check our network at the same time network segmentation is is very very important we can uh, we get to know that uh, we are only allowing the the traffic which is intended we define the parameters we define the zones we define the segments we categorize the sensitive data and force segmentation using physical and virtual security controls not just one control Uh, we can also establish the access based on these controls using the micro parameter designs which are there and last but not the least encrypt all network traffic regardless of the origin now comes a point policies and procedures it seems like odd that why do we need policies and procedures but to extend the zero trust to the cloud requires security delivered from the cloud and security from the cloud all, uh, always needs to have a policy uh, which is enforced correctly and by having users and offices connect directly to the cloud it becomes even more important wherein we don't have firewalls we we have only virtual firewalls which are securing us we have a vpn we have a network and cloud architecture is simplified so it governance and policies are very very important to manage but must be comprehended uh, must be comprehended ac across the organization and across the applications now another thing which i want to talk about before we wrap up the stock is how to be implemented right we need to identify the sensitive data map the sensitive data that where it's flowing architect the the, the zero trust micro parameters continuously monitor them and enforce security automation and automation is not a, a full of security team but it's a friend it it gives us more time to do much more detect what could go wrong in our organization and being more proactive so can we say trust and always verify can we say that never trust and always verify is the mantra and uh, one thing which i want to highlight is that tech moves very fast never think that we have just gotten to where we think that we know it all it is never the case that's where you know that you have to you you you're going to have a fatal fall so no single technology is associated with zero trust and it's not just a a, a product or it's a strategy it's a perspective and no product can uh, can bolt on top of existing security strategies so what we can do is we can have a better visibility into the data network assets we can have a uh, less operation cost but more insights on what we are doing and can we say identity is becoming a new parameter absolutely that starts from there so let's verify with single sign on have mfa we verify devices applications and learn and adapt to the machine learning and ai technologies that we have take the baby steps you don't have to do it all at once and one uh, one important thing is that if you have a big organization and you say that i'm going to implement zero trust at one building no it has to be implemented everywhere so here are a few of the references around zero trust you can reach me anytime on my twitter at infosec vandana uh, i'm there on linkedin i'm very much reachable feel free to dm me or reach out to me on linkedin i'll be more than happy to take your inputs feedback 
or connect with you, have a discussion around this topic if you're really interested, or if you, if you have something in mind that I can add to my uh, future research that I'm doing. Thank you so much from India. All right, let me see how I can stop sharing. Sorry, I'm here. Yes. All right, so we're waiting for them to log in their questions. Oh, there. Uh, it, first off, before I ask the question, uh, I really love the talk. Uh, it's more inclined to information security management, so uh, quite brilliant to listen to. Then again, <clears throat> going back to the question, is it, uh, is it ideal, recommendable to totally trust or rely the third party service organizational control SOC to or SOC? Uh, two type reports uh, provided by cloud service providers on the security of their cloud infrastructure. What are the items that you think organizations must look out in the cloud hosting agreement contracts when it comes to ensuring the level of reasonable trust on the enforcement of security controls? See, uh, when I talk about totally trust or rely on the third party service organization controls, um, there are two things that comes into picture because I have worked on uh, SOC 2 controls and other things. Um, I have realized that uh, there are a lot of organizations which might not let you access their environment, but they let third party do it for you. So at certain point, we have to trust them. We cannot totally trust them, but this is the way to go. We cannot fight with them and say that uh, we need to pen test your environment. Sometimes we have to understand, we have to consider these things. And uh, when we talk about hosting uh, uh, agreements and contracts, we have to make sure we understand what we have to manage, where we have to manage, and how much is our responsibility. Uh, think about if we have a uh, if we have an AWS account and we have S3 bucket, and we are not securing it correctly. Who is at the problem? Whose data is going uh, away? It's our data. I've seen a lot of top breaches happening because of that. And we know there are top organizations which are being hacked because of that. So while performing the contract, we need to understand first our network that what we have and what we are planning to uh, push to the cloud. Because if we don't know what we are pushing to the cloud, we're just gonna sign the contract and we'll be in trouble. So 